Atrial fibrillation is the most common sustained cardiac arrhythmia and estimates suggest that its prevalence is increasing. Hi guys, my name is Dr. Asim and I am here with another video from Plavable. So let's dive into atrial fibrillation and learn what's the typical presentation of a patient, what it looks like on an ECG and how do you manage it as a junior doctor. So let's get started. So let's see our first case who is a 71 year old man recently feels breathless on exertion with some palpitations when resting. He finds them difficult to describe and ECG was performed. What's the single most likely diagnosis? Atrial fibrillation is characterized by shivering of the atria instead of a proper contraction. And the typical presentation of a patient includes breathlessness, palpitations, syncope or discomfort in the chest. So whenever a patient comes to us and we are suspecting atrial fibrillation, like in this case, we hook up the ECG leads to the patient and what confirms the diagnosis of atrial fibrillation is the characteristic irregularly irregular rhythm that we see in this ECG and absent P waves. Once the diagnosis is confirmed, the management is based on correcting the rate, the rhythm and anticoagulation to prevent the risk of stroke. Now the question arises, what to offer first? Is it rate control or rhythm control? NICE has very clear guidelines and it states that offer rate or rhythm control if the onset of arrhythmia is less than 48 hours and start rate control if it is more than 48 hours or is uncertain. However, for the purpose of PLAB exam, we need to learn that rate control is the first line management in most of the patients apart from a small subgroup whom we offer rhythm control. So for rate control, a beta blocker or a rate limiting calcium channel blocker, example diltiazam, is used as the first line. But a common contraindication for beta blockers is patients of asthma and therefore we offer them a calcium channel blocker instead. However, we need to remember that digoxin is the preferred choice if the patient has coexistent heart failure. If the patient at presentation is hemodynamically unstable, that is the systolic blood pressure is less than 90 millimeters of mercury, then we go for immediate DC cardioversion. When it comes to anticoagulation, so NICE recommend that we offer patients a choice of either novel oral anticoagulants, drugs like apixaban or rivaroxaban, or we can also give the patient warfarin now it depends on the patient's chad wax score if males have a score of 1 or more than 1 or females have a score of 2 or more than 2. So as a quick summary, if the patient is presenting with features like breathlessness, palpitations and we are suspecting atrial fibrillation, we hook up the ICG leads and irregularly irregular RR intervals and absent P waves is diagnostic for atrial fibrillation. We treat it with rate control which is with a beta blocker or a calcium channel blocker if a patient is asthmatic or digoxin if the patient has coexistent heart failure. If the patient at presentation is hemodynamically unstable we go for immediate DC cardioversion. And if we are asked that what's the long-term management in such patients to prevent the risk of stroke, then the answer would be anticoagulation using drugs like warfarin or your NOAX. I hope you guys enjoyed this teaching session with me and would stay tuned to the Plavables YouTube channel for upcoming videos on cardiology. You can also join us on our teaching webinars which are conducted by our team which is Anyone Can Teach and where we try to cover the high yield topics and trust me these sessions are absolutely free. Also guys please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.